On April 8th of this year, 2024, we had a total eclipse in Maine. The last total eclipse in Maine was 1963, and the next one was 2044. There is a decent shot that I might not be around for the next one. But that said, I don't know of a better lesson in time is fleeting than that eclipse. 61 years ago was the last one before this one. This one in Maine, which I was fortunate enough to see and record from my home. Um, at the end of that recording, which I'm going to play for you now, you're going to hear the bell from the 1800 church, year 1800s, church that we renovated and the bell that was uh, put together by Paul Revere's apprentice in there. So think about it for a second. 32 seconds was the totality came and went pretty fast. It was pretty special time. I'm going to play that video for you now and I've got some comments on the other side of that video. Oh yeah, that's um, probably Venus. Getting close. 3.30. I think it's at 3.31. Yeah, it? it is. So we got a minute? Yeah, I don't even think you got a minute. It's almost done. Oh, it's just a little speck. Yeah. Yeah, well, if you took your glasses off for a second, you would. Yeah, well, I gotta go in now. Okay. I'm going. Okay, I hope that you found that inspirational, pretty special video. Heard my wife talking in the background there, uh, reminding me to go ring the bell, which I might have forgotten if she hadn't done that. So I scurried in and did that. But there's a few things that, again, time is fleeting. Opportunities are fleeting. If I had done something else in that 32 seconds, wouldn't have recorded it, wouldn't have seen it, would have missed it. The same is true for the opportunities that you are pursuing. Think about the time that's gone by. I've had a lot of people that knew they should do something but didn't do it. And when they eventually did it, for those that did, it was four, five, six, seven months later. All that time is lost. So I would encourage you to do a few things. Recently, I asked people in my groups to write down their why for doing this because this is hard. And if it's only financial, usually it doesn't happen. There's got to be some emotional reason for it. A lot of people talked about families, their upbringing, goals to help other people. Those are things that you can get behind when things don't work as you would hope that they would. And one of the things that's really important is that you take responsibility for what you say you're going to do. 
When you take responsibility, you do a few things. You provide perspective that you are not a victim, that you're actually in charge of what you do. Two, you end up with some clarity. You can see that you can dream again and set those in front of you. And then three, super important, you build trust. When you do what you say you're going to do, when you do it, you build trust. Conversely, when you don't do what you say you're going to do, when you say you're going to do it, you don't build trust. And people do not usually get attracted to be in business with people that they can't trust and don't meet their commitments. And so I frequently see people that set up goals for what they want to accomplish in the weekly format. The next week I ask them what they did and then they end up saying oftentimes, you know, I didn't do that. And it doesn't appear to bother them. And I would suggest to you that when you make a commitment, that you treat it as a commitment. A lot of people say, I'm sorry. It's a word that I really see no purpose in with rare occasions because they think that that's an eraser for not meeting their commitments. And it's not. If you are truly sorry, down deep to your bones, you would not have missed barring something strange, coma, death, weird stuff. But when you make a commitment, think about, can I carry through with this? <clears throat> One of the things I do is I do a weekly podcast. Every Monday that comes out, if it doesn't come out, Sunday. And I looked the other day and I have done 287 of those. 287, better than five years. And I have not missed one Monday or Sunday. Why is that? It's not terribly hard to do those podcasts, but they become a habit. And the fact that I've got a streak going of 287, I don't want to miss that streak, barring death coma or something like that. So it became a habit. And more you can make these habits, more you can make the fact that you're going to make so many calls a day or put so many emails out a day or letters out a day, super important that you follow up. And the more you do that, you'll also teach yourself that guess what? I do what I say I'm going to do. So remember, opportunities are fleeting. Time is certainly fleeting. And when you look at what you say you're going to do, think about it before you say it. Think about the commitment you're making. Realize that what's going to be required to meet that commitment and then make the commitment so that you have a commitment to yourself, which is ultimately the most important. Make daily habits. Make the Ivy Lee method where you say what you're going to do the next day or that morning. And then think about those and make sure you do those. And the more you do those things, the better you will be, the better your trust with other people. They'll want to be around you. That You can develop the habit that people will say, hey, when he says he's going to do something, he does it or she does something. So I would encourage you to remember that. Use those things to your benefit. And if you do that, your odds of succeeding will be much better than those that don't succeed. If you don't know how to start conversations, go over to brucewhipple.com. There's a free class on conversation starters. If you are struggling with the steps, <clears throat> again, go over to brucewhipple.com. There's the Acquisition Advantage Bootcamp there. Great way to get started and know the steps, and that also gives you access to a monthly group live Q&A with me. So I hope that you, again, appreciate the time is fleeting. I hope that you took away something from that eclipse video and also something from the rest of the commentary and thoughts that i've given here it's important really important that people can count on you and most importantly that you can count on yourself to follow through with what you said you were going to do and i'm sorry is one that you should eliminate from your vocabulary make sure rather than to say i'm sorry that i did it and the more times you do that the better you'll become, the higher your integrity will be, and usually the more success will follow that.